So fabulous. Okay, so now we are recording. We are here. Good morning. It is a little chilly today, so we're going to do a couple things just to warm ourselves up. We're going to start rubbing our hands together. Now we're going to create heat in our fingers and a little bit more circulation. And if you are able, Kind of bring this energy to your feet and little stomps, gentle little stomps into the ground. So you're just waking up the bottoms of your feet. And we're going to move a little bit more here. So we're going to start shaking our hands out. And if you are knitting, crocheting on your phone or computer, we need to do a lot of movement into our wrists, into our hands to keep them healthy. Let's relax the feet and just feel the bottoms of your feet on the ground. Feel the, the, the bottoms of your heels, the big toes, the pinky toes. Relax the shoulders and let's start doing some shoulder rolls. We're gonna bring our shoulders up towards our ears, back, shoulder blades kind of come together and then we float forward. So connect us with the breath, inhale. And when you're rounding the bend, exhale. Inhale to exhale. We're going to change directions, float those shoulders up, inhaling, exhaling as we come back, inhaling as we come forward, exhaling as we come back. One more here. Relax the shoulders away from the ear and our head. This is our crown. Pat yourself. <laughs> Swear to goodness, we're going to pat on our head and circle on our belly. Kidding but not. So just with your head, palm lightly on your head, can you stretch up a bit taller? And when I do that, my little belly, my core engages. And so that means my spine's a little bit more in alignment. I'm a little taller and I'm feeling pretty good about being that little quarter inch taller because why not? We're gonna take a big breath, but we're taking our arms out to the side. We're gonna be mindful of our shoulders this morning. And as in any practice of yoga, you're gonna do the movements that feel okay. You're not gonna do anything that feels bad. You will bring yourself, that will not serve my purpose or your purpose. So arms are gonna come out and then we're gonna rotate as much as we can our palms to the ceiling and then our palms to the floor. And again, connect this with the breath. Inhale, palms up, exhale, palms down. And if your shoulders can rotate a little further, then you just rotate a little further and the pinky start floating up towards the back of the room and then the thumbs start pressing back. But just be mindful and careful with this amazing body we've got. And if you're able, we're gonna take those arms a little higher. If that feels rotten, you're gonna take them a little lower. So now we're sort of, I'm gonna back myself up just a bit. So keep your arms up. Okay, so I'm in my mid range of what you can see. So now my arms are up. I'm gonna inhale, wiggle my fingers, Exhale, roll my hands into gentle fists, wrap my thumb around my fingers, and with these long arms, I'm circling into my wrists. Find a deep breath in and a deep breath out. We'll start moving the other way. And let's let our arms be still. And you're sh at this point, your arms are probably very warm. And I, I'm hearing a chorus of thank yous quietly, maybe in my head, but from here, let's heel toe our feet out a little wider. Our heels are about even with the legs of our chair. We're gonna breathe in tall. And then here comes heaven. Let's take left hand to right knee, right hand on top. Before we go any further, let's breathe in tall. And then exhale our shoulders low. And then, We'll breathe in, look forward, and exhale, gaze over to the right. And your neck movement is going to feel 
just right for your neck. So your neck movement may be 15 degrees. This is math, so don't worry too much. It's not going to be accurate. It may be, I don't know, 45 degrees. So we're getting that, enjoying that little stretch here. Breathe in. And exhale. We're going to windmill. It kind of means float your arms up, float your arms up. And exhale to side two. Right hand to left knee, left hand on the top. Breathe in nice and tall. And then we're exhaling with our top of our head, even with the ceiling. We're just going to look over to that other shoulder. And with this movement, can we notice our pinky toes? I know, a little. It's an opposite of where we're feeling the work. Press from your pinky toes all the way down the outside edges of your feet, just to give your legs a little bit more involvement with the, what we're doing here. Big breath in. And then we're going to exhale. We're going to look forward. And we're going to windmill one arm up, then the other arm up. And then arms can be sort of coming out of the shoulders or sort of out, doesn't matter. We're going to stretch up tall. We're going to lift up our heels, bring them in, lift up our toes, bring them in. And all of a sudden, our knees are in line with our hips. And we're going to bring our hands to our hearts, pressing palms together, fingertips together. And now I'm bringing hands to heart. And with a little pressure of thumbs going to chest and chest coming to thumbs, we're just connecting here, maybe taking a moment to close our eyes, enjoy a deep breath in through our noses, feeling expansion of belly and ribs. And exhale, big sigh out, and come to our mountain pose. If practicing standing up feels better for you, Go ahead, mount carefully, gently, hands to the chair, nose over toes, lift to stand. I'm going to be teaching from the chair. If your body needs a, a little different space, feel free to lift your body, come to standing, make sure there's no objects under your feet, and we're going to take a big breath in. Exhale, hands to heart, and we're going to move into our cat-cow stretches. These are fun old friends of, of ours in yoga. You can add any sound effects you'd like because let's face it, sometimes at nine in the morning, it's really good to move, just saying. So cat cow starts with a nice long spine and you're gonna look at me, hello, good morning. And when you're ready to exhale, you're gonna drop chin to chest, round your upper back, Scoop your belly backwards. I'm going to turn so you can see a little bit of what monkey business I'm up to. So rounding here. And your shoulder blades actually come apart. And then when it's time to inhale, we're going to move forward. We're going to start bending our elbows towards our ribs. Gaze towards the ceiling, but not a lot of movement in the chin. And we're going to feel our shoulder blades come together and then our belly and ribs come forward. So this is cow and this is cat. And you can breathe in when you come forward, bending into the elbows, looking up. Exhale, rolling back. One more time like this, inhaling and exhaling. Stretch up nice and tall. I'm going to turn to see y'all. Hello again. Rolling my shoulders back. And let's just shake out those hands. And if possible, a little balance challenge. Lift up your left heel. Move your arms up a little bit. And start circling into that foot. Now, I'm going to come back a little further. What this could look like is arms up foot off the ground and circles. What it could also look like is toes on the ground and circles. There are some of us who are just feeling snappy and fancy today. You can play with your arms coming out, your foot coming out. 
And when you're ready, we're gonna do a little bit of a stretch. So if your heel's on the ground, you're bringing toes towards your shin. If your foot, if your leg is up and knee is bent, you're gonna bring your toes towards your shin. And if you are rocking the long leg, bring your toes towards your shin. Breathe in. And as possible, you're gonna hug that knee towards your body. And if it's not possible to bring that foot off the ground, you know, because you can't take the mountain to Muhammad, you take Muhammad to the mountain, you breathe in and you come down. And you just kind of stretch towards that left leg. And when you're ready, we're gonna bring that foot down, stomp those feet just a little bit. Side two, roll the shoulders back and away. You can inhale those arms to any interesting position. If this is super, um, if it's super challenging, I want arms no higher than this. If you're curious about being asymmetrical with your body kind of in different shapes, you can bring like one arm up, one arm down. Start the circle with the toes on the ground. Can move your arms in different shapes. You can lift that foot off the ground. And when you're drawing those circles, think of your big toe as the paintbrush. And then go the other way. Maybe there's arm movement. Maybe there's stillness. So when you're ready, heel on the ground, toes towards the shin, et cetera, et cetera. Just a big old stretch here. And when you're ready to exhale, hug everything in. Breathe in tall. Floating forward, if that makes better sense for you. Active. Stand. This is our standing leg, even though we're sitting. And if you are standing, hold on to the chair for this one. And let's bring those feet down. Whew. If possible, we're going to come just a bit further into our chairs because we're stretched into the front of our hips, let's work into the sides a little bit. If you are standing, hands on the chair, circle your hips with your feet steady. For those of us seated, hands on the chair and our knees move like windshield wipers. And the glory of this is you can really feel what happens to your feet. As your knees go right, what part of your right foot is connected to the earth? to the carpet, whatever's under your feet. And then when your knees go left, what happens? So noticing your feet is one of my main themes of everything I teach. Because if we are lucky enough to have working legs, working feet, it's time to appreciate them just, just a little bit this morning. So. Let's lean forward the smallest bit. So more of our weight is in our toes and the, the bottom, the um, toe mounds. If you're standing fingers on the chair, because this can get a little interesting and a little tricky, because when we come back, this is a beautiful part of being seated. We can actually press into our heels a lot, lighten the load on the toes and move our shoulders a bit back of our hips, just a bit, and just enjoy that connection. And then coming right back to shoulders over hips, feel all that connection of foot to ground, knowing that this might be useful the next time you're out on a walk. Let's just say you're in Red Morton Park. The sidewalks are nice and even, yay. But let's pretend you go up on the kind of across the grassy fields, which are beautifully maintained. I actually took this walk on Sunday, so I'm preaching from experience. Sometimes there's a little divot, and sometimes you need to be able to move into your ankles and your feet. So good practice for all those beautiful walks around Grand Morton Park, unless you live in San Carlos and you're walking around Burton Park. So just... <laughs> Enjoy our community, inhale nice and tall. And exhale, we're gonna move into our sun salutation. So we're gonna take our hands first to our knees, float halfway down. So we're not going, 
we're not taking our forehead towards the knees. We're taking the top of our head to stretch and the back of our tailbone to stretch. I will show you my dramatic move. I think this might look like the FTB floor. So we're just enjoying this long spine. And when it's time to exhale, come back. You might use your hands to press you back or your arms are by your sides. We're going to go a little deeper now, breath in. Exhaling, coming through that fold and going a bit deeper if that feels all right. So now our ribs are going to come towards our thighs. I like to make a little room between my legs so my ribs, my boobs have somewhere to go and my belly. So I'm stretching low. My elbows are bent, and right now they're out like chicken wings, but I want to bring them closer to my ribs, press into palms. Big breath in here. Exhale, come up. Now combining our inhale with a stretch up for our arms, and our right foot comes forward, and our left foot comes back. Inner edges of the feet are, are pressing towards the center line and your left heel probably is up tall and that's where we want to be. We're going to take hands to heart. We're going to stretch that right arm forward. Left hand is going to come behind the head. A little tricky here. We're going to inhale that elbow way back and exhale that elbow to midline. And inhale. My assistant here is August. We're inhaling to exhale. We're inhaling to exhale. And now, right hand's going to come up. We're going to take both hands behind the head and just open our hearts nice and wide. Maybe you take your gaze towards the ceiling. Maybe you find it even more deep back bend because we have been working on back bends in cat cow. So your chest may start stretching towards the sky and your elbows are pulling back. And then we're exhaling, feet are coming together, stretching low, holding on to your knees or floating forward, taking those arms way behind. And way behind can look like a lot of things chin to chest, and when you're ready to inhale, press into your toes and your heels, inhale, find height, find your core strength all the way up, and exhale, back to our mountain pose with feet about hip width apart, fingers stretching towards the earth, corners of your mouth traveling up towards your ears, even if it's fake. It, set, it tells your brain that things are do, going all right. Let's breathe in all the down. Exhale, halfway fold. Breathe in, making a little space so this halfway fold feels very easy. This time, while we're stretching our spine long, let's stretch our shoulder blades towards our waistband. And when you're ready, Breath in, exhale, come on back, feet a little closer, inhale, and this time all the way down with our forward fold, fingers to knees, maybe they travel towards your ankles, maybe not, finding a deep forward fold here. Big breath in, feel your Ribs and belly expanding, hands to the knees, pressing up, elbows towards the ribs as we exhale. And the biggest breath in as right foot floats back, left foot comes forward, right heel is off the ground, left arm comes in front of you, right arm bends right hand behind the head, just resting gently, no, no pressure. And we're going to inhale that elbow way back and exhale that elbow towards the face, towards the nose. 
inhale way back. Exhale. Just one more with your inhale way back. Exhale, that elbow forward. Now that left hand is going to come behind the head. Palms are on the back of the head. Open those elbows wide. Feel those shoulder blades coming closer together. Gaze to the ceiling and maybe moving from the mid and upper back, we open up a little bit more towards the sky. And then our exhale is going to bring our feet together, stretch low, hands coming up behind us, chin to chest. And if it's possible, gentle pulses to the sky. One, two, three, breath in. And exhale, release out, wiggle the feet, shake out the arms. I highly recommend, in, per in a perfect world, we'll have, have a, a cup of tea, a glass of water, some kind of fluid, about halfway through any exercise class. Sometimes it's nice to take a hydration break and or a moment of clarity, just to kind of stretch yourself Maybe close your eyes, notice what's happening in your body, notice any changes. Give yourself permission for the last half of class to bring your practice back a little bit, a little less effort, or open it up a little bit more, a little more effort. There, I can't speak for your body, but I'm gonna speak for my body and there are days where I need an energetic practice and there are days I need a quiet practice. And even in, the, I can take the exact same class and I can energize like a little bunny, boom, 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 or I can take measures of maybe not going to that extreme, like we've been doing back bends, heart openers. Maybe I'm not going to look like an Olympic gymnast today or any day, and maybe I'm going to find that gentle heart opener, which makes everything feel good. And I'm just doing a gentle stretch in my chest. I'm bringing my elbows towards my ribs, palms are up, and I'm just pressing my belly button forward, my eyes look at the sky. And the rotation is gentle. I just want my shoulder blades coming a little closer together, and then I get a lovely stretch here. I could show you ways to make this much more full of effort, but maybe this is the right effort today. Now, we're going to move to some standing poses unless that doesn't suit you. If that doesn't suit you, no big deal. We're, there are other ways to work into these poses, and I will cue standers and seaters, but now I'm going to do that gentle switch to standing. And of course, thanks to my friends in PT and the Adaptive PE program, I have a way. I'm going to take my hands to the chair. My nose goes over past my toes. Then I feel that weight shift in my feet. And we did talk about it a few minutes ago. So that the front of my feet are really getting busy here. And my core is engaging. And little by little, I'm coming up to a standing position. And if you play your cards right with this one, you're actually working your core as, just as if you were doing a sit-up or something like that, because your core is taking you to this different standing pose. I'm going to walk around. I'm going to move some furniture. This is the fun part of my job. So I want everybody to come behind their chair. You don't need to move your furniture. If you're staying in your chair, I'm going to recommend you start this practice with your hands on the seat of the chair, lifting your heels. If you're just, let's keep hands on the chair or hands on the chair, looking forward, inhale the heels up and exhale the heels down. That felt decent, and you're seated. Maybe your hands come up either to the side or in front. 
outstanding folks, same option. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, come down. One more time. Inhale, find the level of stretch that feels great. And exhale, bring everything down. I'm going to show, and because we've done the seated, seated people, you're going to take your knees side to side, stretching into hips. Standing people, we're going to circle our hips a lot like this. Let me show you pretend chair a little like this. So you're so, sort of into the hula idea, and then we'll go the other way. And there's a lovely way to break this down into smaller parts, standing or seated. If you're standing, one hand on the chair, and this, this knee is gonna bend, and this hip is gonna come up, and this shoulder is gonna come down. Got it. And then we're gonna tilt our, I'm gonna turn to show you this one. We're gonna tilt forward into our hips, and again, a little bit of knee bend. And then we come back to neutral. Then this leg is going to bend. This hip's coming up. This shoulder's coming down. Ooh, lovely stretch. And then we're going to do that lift into. We're going to go forward in with our pelvis and back. All right. So it kind of ends up looking like this. Doot, 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 doot. Or flowing here. And then make sure you go the other way. And then all of us are going to come to mountain. If you're seated, hands out. If you're standing and your balance is feeling steady, no hands on the chair. If you're standing, your hand, your balance is warming up. It's early in the day. Just hold on to the chair with as much as you need. One hand, two hands, and just feel your feet. And when you're ready, we'll take that big breath again. Inhale. One hand or both hands up if you're seated. I'm hoping both hands are up. And then we're going to exhale, hands to heart. Roll the shoulders back, release the hands down. I'm going to make a gentle turn because I want to show you forward fold round. I can't even say round two because we do. I, I like teaching forward fold and we've done several million already. I'm exaggerating. But we're going to look forward. If you're seated, you're going to feel your feet. Make sure there's daylight between your feet. Breathe in. Shoulders come towards knees. If you're standing, heels walk back. Head between the biceps. Nice soft knees. Like our, our colleagues in the chair, we want to bend into the knees. And then that tailbone that we already practiced that lift with, Tailbone's lifting and our head's coming between our biceps. If your legs and hips say yes, you can bend one knee. Semi straighten it, bend the other. Give you a little bit more movement into your lower back. If you are seated, lift the heel. Lift the heel. We're going to breathe ourselves in, fill that belly. Now look forward. If you're seated, press hands to thighs. Come up to mountain. If you're standing, right foot comes forward. Seated, right foot comes forward, left foot moves back. Left heel is up and stays up. Gently bend into that lunging pose. And if you're saying, huh, I did that seated, yes, you did. Why do I point this out every time I teach? To remind me, you, that a seated practice offers everything and then some. Standing practice is fabulous too. Seated practice is a lot of fun, a lot of good adventure. So we're just facing forward. And all we're going to do is go back to that windmill. So option one. Inhale the arm way behind and exhale it forward. For some of us, that's not going to feel great. So what do we do? We modify right hand to the right shoulder, circle from the elbow, and then change direction. So you could be long arm, 
change direction. Four shorter arms, change direction. And then that right hand's going to come to the chair. Small weight shift. If you're seated, hold on to the sides of the, your seat cushion. If you're standing, a little bit more weight into the front leg, a little less weight into the back leg. Hold on to the chair. If your chair is wobbly, recognize that and move back. <laughs> if your chair is solid and you're just saying, ooh, what is the next adventure? You could lift that foot off the ground. You don't have to. If the foot lifts, maybe you flex that foot. And then we bring everything back. Breathe our feet back together and seated people, feet together, move forward enough that you can do that tick tock in your knees. Standing people, oh yeah, little hip stretch. And then we're coming back where everything started into our mountain pose. So here we go. Hold on to the chair. I'm just showing you how we rotate palms forward. Take a breath in. I'm now moving back, so we're all much more matchy. So forward folding if you're in the chair or standing, walk back. And between the biceps, knees are soft. The addition for the standing people who have a little bit more room to move your neck. Take a big breath in and look at your right bicep. And then you exhale and look over to your left bicep. And we're centering up, seated or standing. The left foot moves forward, the right heel lifts up, and we're sinking down. Left hand, here we go. Maybe you're going to do three circles with the long arm or three circles with the short arm. I'm going to move so you can see my little monkey business. I'm going to imagine we've done about three, and then we're changing direction. One, two, three. Ta da! <laughs> Breathe in and bring feet together. Nope. Bring that right foot back. I forgot. <laughs> and we're going to do that weight shift. So, seated or standing. Energize into the left leg, lighten the load on the right. I use my steady gaze to help me balance. It may be that your toes stay on the ground. It may be that your right foot comes up. If you're super flexible, enjoy it, but do not let your right heel touch the back of your head. That was my joke. When you're done laughing, bring that foot down, slide your feet together. Whew moving around the hips. Okay. I'm going to rotate myself to look at you guys. So truth be told, I went to my niece's gymnastics meet at Red Morton Park the other day, yay Redwood City, and there were kids there, and they were kids, you know, 10 to 16 year olds who were doing gymnastic things, including bringing their, touching their I don't know, touching heels to head, crazy great thing that we don't have to, that is not our yoga practice. But when I say silly things like don't let the, you know, don't let your heel hit your head, that's where I'm, that's my, that's where I'm coming from. We're going to inhale nice and tall and exhale hands to heart. But there is a point to that silliness. So, we are going to roll ourselves back in front of the chair. When my calves feel the chair, then my hands are going to reach. My knees are going to bend. And my nose goes behind my toes. So sometimes there are people, and we love them, and we know them, that have a yoga practice that looks very different than what we're doing here. That is an absolutely legitimate, great way to go. And what we're doing is an absolutely wonderful, legitimate way to go. Because yoga is focused on breath. So as we inhale our arms up, 
and exhale our hands to heart, this is yoga practice. So maybe you can add a foot awareness pressing feet to the ground. There are some of us that this big arm movement isn't going to work. So hand to heart, hand to belly, soft gaze, breathe in, and exhale. That is the essence of yoga, the awareness of our breath moving in and our breath moving out. So all the things we add, maybe opening our hearts, breath in, crossing one arm over the other, doesn't matter which is on top, and find a way to enjoy the shoulder stretch, either keeping the arms elevated or holding on to elbows, or hands coming to shoulders. If your arms are fatigued after this practice, you can even just bring them down right here. And when you're ready to inhale, before you make a move, notice which arm is on top. Inhale nice and wide. And exhale the other arm on top, remembering you can find your shoulder stretch here or here here, just enjoy what your body is able to do. Enjoy that feeling of opening in your upper body. If you're practicing to the point of pain, please stop <laughs> and turn this into a hug. Everybody, if you're, if you're stuck with this beautiful Wednesday morning and participating in this yoga class, give yourself a hug. And truth be told, if your participation for the last whatever minutes has been the steady breath, even a bigger hug in, because that is, that is the courage of your convictions and being truthful to your body. If the bigger movements suit you, let's open our arms wide to that move into our goddess pose, so elbows in line with the shoulders, adding a wrist stretch if you can with palms looking at the ceiling. Ooh, diggity dog. If you are a somebody who knits, crochets, or spends a lot of time on technology devices, this should feel quite, quite delightful. And then we're just going to let those arms come down, give it a gentle shake. Ooh. Move forward in our chairs just a tad for a one more little one more little adventure. So we're going to stretch our hips in a very slow, steady way before we move into our resting pose. So stretching into our hips, let's take left foot in front of right and just check this out. I I find this is a time to inhale my spine a little longer again. And if this is a stretch, smile, and whatever leg is in front, have that power be on top while you hug yourself. If you need more motion to make this feel like the right level of practice for you, you can wrap at the ankles. But again, we're ending with a big hug. So you can hug, even pat yourself on the back. And if this is still not feeling like enough sensation, then you add, and you probably, if you're not feeling much sensation here, then you're probably thinking, huh, this is eagle pose. Yes, it is. And eagle pose can involve crossing at the knees. It does not need to. And again, closing with that pat on the back. And what we're going to do now is inhale, open everything out, the arms, the feet, bring it all wide, all shakety, shakety, shakety. And then heel toe those feet back in. Then right foot in front of left. Or any 
of these different opportunities. And then the top arm is the same as your front leg. And again, that sensation of giving yourself a big old hug and a pat on the back for getting yourself together for an early class on a winter morning. Ready, you get to untangle. So just take one foot out, one foot out. Arms are going to come up. And what we're going to do is stretch our arms nice and tall with an inhale. And we're going to take a big old sigh as we exhale. Forward folding, if that feels great, just sighing out anything that just needs to go. Breath in. <sighs> Your journey after you've done that big sigh and release is to come back in that space of feeling peaceful or on the road to peaceful or contemplating a little bit of peace. Move back into your chair until your spine touches something solid. If you can even get your feet on the ground, that's great. Just find the most comfortable way to sit. Soften your gaze or even close your eyes, hands to your lap. Noticing how your slow breath creates bit more peace in your brain. I like to say, as the breath goes, so does the mind. So as we slow our breath, we can hopefully in time slow down the hectic thoughts, the 3,000 calls to action, and be present with your breath in your body. Sign out of our beautiful Trevande class for the day. And I will look forward to meeting with everybody next month at this class. Or consider checking into Adaptive PE from Redwood City. We offer in person classes with a lot of safety measures, online classes with a lot of fun. Um, and please enjoy this beautiful community day. There's a lot learn. There's a lot of great people participating. Thank you, great people, for showing up, and namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much, Ruth Russ. Oh, it's my Thank pleasure. You. Thank is, you. This is a thrill and a half. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye. And thank you, everyone, especially thank you, Carol, for pointing out the audio issue. I much appreciate that. I'll I'll try to get louder. <laughs> oh, I